let's learn how to create a sharpening effect for your filters. So if you ever look up how to sharpen an image, you'll probably come across an image kernel. And so an image kernel is just a matrix that kind of, you scan across the image and you multiply the pixel values, add them together. Um, so you can do things like edge detection with it. Um, sharpening is pretty easy to do. You just put in a few numbers, multiply it with the image and you get a sharpened image. Unfortunately, you can't just do that in Lens Studio. Uh, so you might think you're out of luck, except we can still do it using a few math operations. So there's an article, how I implemented my own augmented reality beauty mode. And so the goal of this article is to go from normal skin to smooth skin. Now, like Lynn Studio already has the retouching built in, but the neat thing about this article is they kind of went through the process and they show that if you blur the image, subtract it from the original, uh, then you add uh, a neutral gray, you can get the fine details. And if you overlay it, you enhance all these details and you're essentially sharpening the image without having to use that image kernel. And so that is actually pretty easy to do in Lens Studio. So let's jump on in. I just have a new blank project here. And so all I need to add is a material. Now you can't just add any material. You need to make sure it's one of the graph materials because we're going to use the material editor. So I'll just go with the graph empty. And then up here, I'm going to add a post effect. I'll just go with color correction. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one it is. Now over here in the inspector panel on our post effect, you see we have a material. I'm going to swap that out for the graph empty. Now it gives us a white screen, but no worries. We're going to go ahead and get our sharpened effect started. So with our graph empty, we want to go into the material editor. So if you don't see it here, you can go to window panels, material editor, or up here at the top of the inspector panel, you can go to graph editor. Now we can see our shader output. Now, if you don't see this, make sure right here it says graph empty uh, because since we add the color correction, there is another material. So if you see this big, more complicated network, just make sure you switch over to your graph empty. All right, so I'm just gonna resize this so we have a little more space and let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is the blur. So I'm going to add node. If I search for blur, I want the Gaussian blur. And let's go ahead and connect that so we can see what's going on. Now we don't have any output because we need a texture to blur. So I'm going to right click, add node. And I want a texture. Now we have three different options. In this case, we want the texture to the object parameter. Now the parameter means that it is something we can set over here in the inspector. So I'm going to take this, plug it into the texture. Now you can see we have a pink screen, but I can now select a texture. So I'm going to click here. And what I want to add is the screen texture. Uh, we can also use the device camera texture. This is the uh, raw camera input. Uh, if we use the screen texture, that just means we can add extra effects. Um, and as long as they're placed before the color, color correction post effect, they'll be included in our sharpen filter. Now, if you don't have the screen texture as an option, uh, just come over to resources and add it here. Uh, since we added the color correction, it was already added as a resource. All right, so we have our texture coming in. Now, if I select this node, I want to set our pixel size to something pretty small. So we am going to go 0 0.001 and 0 0.001. Now we still can't see anything. Uh, that's because we need to set these text chords. So I'm going to 
right click, add node. And I want to add the surface UV cord zero. So this is just kind of, um, it's going to tell the blur how to map our input texture and kind of how to size it. So now if we plug that in, we can see we have our blurred image here. And that is controlled by this blur factor. So zero is no blur. Go up to like 10. Uh, you get lots of blur, but you can see it's kind of starting to split out. Um, essentially, how this works is it kind of creates duplicates of the image and overlays them to make it blurry. Uh, so you can't go too big with your blur factor. So if we go like with four, you can see it's pretty blurry, but you kind of get this fringing. Uh, so you can play around with the pixel size, but then you have to go to an even higher blur factor. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, you are going to be limited by how much blur you can add. It's not all smooth. But if you don't go too high, uh, you can get a good effect. Now, since we're going to play around with this, I'm going to go ahead and add a float parameter. And once that is connected, now over here in our uh, material settings, we can set the value here. All right. So now that we're blurring, we just need to subtract our blurred image from the original image uh, to get our high frequency detail. And that's what we're going to overlay to get our sharpen effect. So let's add a subtract node and our blurred image is gonna go into the bottom. The output will go into our shader. Now we don't have anything here because we need to connect our original image. But this uh, 2D texture can't plug into the subtract. So if you just uh, release in the blank space, it'll bring up a few nodes that we can connect it into. And what we want is a texture 2D sample. So once we get that, we can plug it into our subtract. And we also need to plug in our UV cords. And now, it might be a little hard to see, but you'll have an outline around the person in the preview. And especially their eyes, you'll be able to see. All right, so we are subtracting. We have our fine detail. But the article also added neutral gray. So I'm going to take the results of that subtract. Plug it in. Now neutral gray, if I click uh, this color picker, that is right in the middle. So you can eyeball it if you want. Or it's just 128, 128, and 128. Uh, because color values go from 0 to 255. All right, so let's expand our preview. So we can see it's a gray image but we have the fine detail of our image in here. So all we need to do is just overlay that on the original and we're done. So let's size this all back down. And I'm going to add a blend node. Let's zoom out a little bit. So our gray image here is going to go into the top. And our original image from this texture 2D sample, I'll go into the bottom. And our blend mode, we're going to change to overlay. And now we're getting our sharpening effect. So if I change this value to zero, we have no sharpening. If I put it up to like three, now we're getting really faint sharpening. As we slowly increase the number, you can see we get more and more sharpening. Once we go too high, we're going to get some weird colors. We're going to get lots of weird artifacts and banding and lines. So if you get that, just kind of scale it back. So if we toggle between zero, no sharpening, and six, uh, you can see that we are sharpening our image. 
and that is all we need to do. So we can apply this material to a screen image or to our post effect and just make sure we have our device camera texture or screen texture and all the sharpening will be taken care of by our uh, material nodes here. So it's nothing too complicated. Uh, we're blurring it, subtracting it from the original, adding gray, overlaying it, and now uh, putting the shader.